I'd like to welcome you, first of all, to the company. Uh, it's really great to have you on board. Um, I look very informal here. Uh, you can call me Red. So, I suspect you were sent down to your to our department uh, without much guidance, so I hope you're not too confused. Um, or I, I want you to be comfortable, of course. So, you can take a seat here. Alright, so, as you know, um, as part of our company, we will be conducting some fairly high-level research. And, of course, we've done a few basic background check already. We've already gone through the interview process uh, by the time you were listening, so <laughs> I'm sure that went very well uh, as you were hired. Um, so what I do is essentially I screen you, um, to put it bluntly, to make sure that you are not a replicant, to make sure that you are a, a completely natural human being. And I know that this test, uh, certain versions of it, have a very poor reputation. Um, you know, they, they, they think that we'll sort of um, strap you into an uncomfortable chair and make you watch or listen to unpleasant things. Uh, and it may be possible uh, that in certain institutions, uh, you know, if you've committed crimes, etc., um, those things factor in. But here, you know, this is just a preliminary screening. Uh, if anything did appear suspicious, uh, that does not necessarily even mean that you would be terminated, um, that you would lose this job, that is. Um, but that we would recommend you for further testing before you could be hired. So what I'm going to do today uh, is just basically start with a smell test. Uh, so that may surprise you. Um, one thing it may interest you to know uh, is that one of the few processes that replicants can imitate with a hundred percent success rate is that of smell perception of, of sense. So what I'm gonna do first is hold up um, these little glass containers. You can see they're perforated at the top and of course they're blocked out so you can't see what's inside but I promise you that every scented item uh, there will be one that does not smell like anything. <laughs> That's also a test, uh, but I, I will inform you, I'm informing you of that now. Uh, I can't tell you, of course, which one it is. But everything that does have a scent is pleasant. We're not going to put <laughs> anything terrible right under your nose. So, this is a very simple. All I want you to do is take a deep breath and tell me what it is that you smell, okay? Alright, so uh, let's do this first one. Uh, I'll hold it up to your nose here, and I just want you to uh, breathe in with me now. That's absolutely right. Great. Alright, so we have four more of these. Again, one of them does not have a smell. So, what about this next one? Mm hmm. Yep, that one's cinnamon. So, uh, third one. Uh, here you go. Yeah, that one's easy. So that one's coffee. 
uh, so far I know um, all the things are pretty much, uh, you know, one drink, you maybe want a latte or something now. Uh, that's just coincidence because you mix up the order and the, the smells that I chose each time. Um, but, alright, let's do this next one. Right, yep, there's just uh, cotton balls in there, so that one is not meant to smell like anything. <laughs> They're not soaked in anything. Uh, so I'll put that aside. Uh, and now this last one. Mm -hmm, something flowery. You can't quite see it. Alright, that's fine. You don't need to know the name. Uh, I know some of us, including myself, don't wear perfume or anything, so, you know, a, a pleasant flowery smell is not necessarily distinct from others. Other flowers. Um, this one happens to be lavender. Yeah, no problem. I know, once you hear it, it seems obvious. So, that was it. You're actually done with the very first part. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do uh, is a brief visual visualization activity. So, um, although the replicants have, you know, very advanced logical circuits, uh, perception, uh, abilities, um, and in many cases, of course, uh, in, in, such as vision, are superior in ways to humans, um, one area, such uh, again, like smell, in which they are a little bit uh, behind us is that of visual, uh, sensual, uh, auditory imagination. So, constructing a scene in one's head. Uh, so, right now, I'm going to prompt you a little bit. Um, that's not, you know, cheating per se. But what we want to do, um, and I'll just uh, attach a couple electrodes to the outside of your head here. Uh, don't worry, it's not going to you know, shock you, you won't feel anything. Uh, you just, uh, it'll receive the electrical impulses through your skin. Um, and you just want to see, you know, to what degree these areas are responsible for visualization, imagination, are lighting up. Um, so I'd like you to sit back and to close your eyes. Alright. And just imagine, um, first of all, that you're on a beach. So for this first part, I just want you to imagine uh, any beach that is one that you, I'm sorry, I, mi I misphrased it. Um, rather, a beach that does not really exist, but sort of your uh, platonic idea, let's say, of what a beach is. Um, so, first, just stick to the major components. Uh, what is a beach to you? For you, you know, maybe you're listening uh, for the sound. To the sound of the waves, um, or to seagulls, maybe children playing in the distance. Uh, and just focus on that for a little while. Just make sure to breathe in. Okay. I apologize if there's any noise from outside the office. Uh, there's not really anything I can do about that. Um, 
Um, so, for the second part now, I want you to build on that idea, but think of a specific beach you've been to. So, this is more of a memory exercise. Um, you know, try to remember one moment, any detail you could think of. Uh, you know, if you haven't been to the ocean, um, a lake is fine, a pond, or if you want um, a specific scene with a beach from a movie, um, your, your life experience is preferable there. Okay, so if you'll just focus on that for about 30 seconds. Um, again, don't stress out too much and I'll be, I'll be quiet for a while. So, I'm just going to read from the list of statements. There are physical questions in total. Um, and what this test does is it measures your empathy quotient. So, I don't want you to worry too much about this. Um, you know, it's just a test. Diagnose your own disorders like autism. Um, but the way to just it is to have a general skill. So if you are a person or someone who is not especially empathetic, uh, that doesn't mean you're going to write you off or feel like you are not worthy. So um, please truthfully, that's more important, again, with the sense of that this test will sense that you are one, so that's going to factor in, or if you do classify more than any possible answer that you may view as negative. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read each question aloud. Um, it's going to be uh, relatively quick. I will read slowly, um, but uh, you know there are a lot of questions to get through. So uh, you'll see these four buttons in front of me, uh, which in order for me to join, uh, represent these addresses. And of course, they're, they're linked. Just go through the steps. Uh, so up next, and do strongly agree with statements. So you know, listen carefully because some of them may be phrased as negative. Um, so strongly agree. Next one is slightly agree. Then slightly disagree. And then strongly disagree. Just press the corresponding button when it registers your answer, and I'll move on to the next question. Uh, you'll notice that there's physically no complete try answer, so if you're really not sure, I'll just pick whatever fits naturally. Alright, so let's begin. 
So, question one. I can easily tell if someone else wants to enter a conversation. Question two. Or a statement, I should say. Um, I prefer animals to humans. Statement three. I try to keep up with the current trends and fashions. Statement four. I find it difficult to explain to others things that I understand easily when they don't understand it the first time. Five, I dream most nights. Six, I really enjoy caring for other people. Seven, I try to solve my own problems rather than discussing them with others. Um, I know this is a bit fast. Like I said, try to go with your first impulse, um, and just, you know, press that button. Uh, number eight, I find it hard to know what to do in a social situation. Number nine, I am at my best first thing in the morning. Number ten, people often tell me that I went too far driving my point home in a discussion. Question 11. It doesn't bother me too much if I am late meeting a friend. 12. Friendships and relationships are just too difficult, so I tend not to bother with them. 13. I would never break a law, no matter how minor. 14. I often find it difficult to judge if something is rude or polite. 15. In a conversation, I tend to focus on my own thoughts rather than on what my listener might be thinking. 16. I prefer practical jokes to verbal humor. 17. I live life for today rather than the future. 18. When I was a child, I enjoyed cutting up worms to see what would happen. 19. I can pick up quickly if someone says one thing, but means another. 20. I tend to have very strong opinions about morality. 21. It is hard for me to see why some things upset people so much. 22. I find it easy to put myself in somebody else's shoes. 23. I think that good manners are the most important thing a parent can teach their child. 24. I like to do things on the spur of the moment. predicting how someone will feel. 26. I am quick to spot when someone in a group is feeling awkward or uncomfortable. 27. If I say something that someone else is offended by, I think that's their problem, not mine. Not mine. Sorry about that. If anyone... Uh, 28. If anyone asked me if I liked their haircut, I would reply truthfully, even if I didn't like it. 29. 
29. I can't always see why someone should have felt offended by a remark. 30. People often tell me that I am very unpredictable. Thirty-one. I enjoy being the center of attention at any social gathering. Thirty-two. Seeing people cry doesn't really upset me. Thirty-three. I enjoy having discussions about politics. Thirty-four. I am very blunt, which some people take to be rudeness, even though this is unintentional. 35. I don't find social situations confusing. 36. Other people tell me I am good at understanding how they are feeling and what they are thinking. Seven. When I talk to people, I tend to talk about their experiences rather than my own. 38. It upsets me to see an animal in pain. 39. I am able to make decisions without being influenced by people's feelings. 40. I can't relax until I have done everything I had planned to do that day. 41. I can easily tell if someone else is interested or bored with what I am saying. 42. I get upset if I see people suffering on news programs. 43. Friends usually talk to me about their problems, as they say that I am very understanding. 44. I can sense if I am intruding, even if the other person doesn't tell me. 45. I often start new hobbies, but quickly become bored with them and move on to something else. 46. People sometimes tell me that I have gone too far with teasing. 47. I would be too nervous to go on a big roller coaster. 48. Other people often say that I am insensitive, though I don't always see why. 49. If I see a stranger in a group, I think that it is up to them to make an effort to join in. 50. I usually stay emotionally detached when watching a film. 51. I like to be very organized in day-to-day -day life, and often make lists of the chores I have to do. 52. I can tune into how someone else feels, rapidly and intuitively. 53. I don't like to take risks. Or, I can easily work out what another person might want to talk about. 55. I can tell if someone is masking their true emotion. 56. Before making a decision, I always weigh up the pros and cons. 57. I don't consciously work out the rules of social situations. 58. I am good at predicting what someone will do. 59. 
deny. I tend to get emotionally involved with a friend's problems. 60. I can usually appreciate the other person's viewpoint, even if I don't agree with it. final part of the test. Um, so again, we're going to process your responses and not so much necessarily the responses themselves because as I said, you know, these apply to a range of, of human beings. Um, but also your physical reactions when answering, um, your brain waves, and so forth. So, I don't require anything else from you today, uh, and I fully expect to see you not uh, sitting across from me here, but perhaps um, around the building when you when you do start work, assuming uh, that everything goes well. So thank you for stopping by today, uh, and I hope that you have a wonderful evening.